Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kahlayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akim, teaching about the Mayam while mouth as in sincerity and truth. It's the brother Yachazak from GMS Dallas with a, another Great Millstone daily dose. I want to uh, continue with the uh, hour of temptation. You know, uh, in the last, uh, in the last lesson, I got into Second uh, Maccabees chapter six with Eleazar. You know, going into the example of uh, they were trying to force him to eat pork, and uh, fast forward into today, uh, that was a situation where they were trying to uh, get uh, a believer to go off. You know, and now. We're going to be in the same position, you know, with Eliezer, it was pork. With us, it'll be the mark of the beast being the RFID microchip, you know. And uh, that was also an example of if you have to face it by yourself, you know. And uh, we also have an example in the same book, Second Maccabees, in chapter 7, that we're going to get, Lord willing. <laughs> and uh, it gives you an idea of what it may look like if... Uh, if you're with your family or if you're with brothers in the camp or in a group of people, you know what I'm saying, that believe the um, extent that this devil is willing to go, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, Revelation 3 and 10 and we're going to jump straight into Sega Maccabees. This is Revelation 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. To try them that dwell upon the earth. Matter of fact, I'm going to look it up in the blue letter. Yeah, I'm going to look that up in the blue letter and see what happens. Let me see. Revelation. Let's see what this says for world. That's the word I want to look up. That should come upon all the world. Logos. Strong's G 3056. Lagos. Lagos. All right. Of speech, a word uttered by a living voice in bodies. A conceptual idea, all right, what someone has said, a word, the sayings of the Most High, all right, word, world, all right, moral precepts, test of the process, man, there's a lot in here, all right, for the word, world, Discourse, act of speaking. Hold on, let me make sure I got the right word. Okay, I put word. No, I'm looking for world. Salakia, Akia. We should come upon all the world. Okay, Oikomeni. That's what I was looking for. Salakia. I wonder what that was going in. Yeah, there we go. Strong's G3625. Oikumene. Right. Oikumene. The inhabited earth, the portions of the earth inhabited by the Greeks in distinction from the land of the barbarians, the Roman Empire, all the subjects of the Roman Empire, the whole inhabited earth, the world, right? The inhabitants of earth, men, right? That's what we're looking for, right? The universe, the world, all right? So all the men in the whole inhabited earth are going to have to deal with the hour of temptation. You see, right? It says, because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right? That's plain. That's plain. So man, woman, child, right? When you get into Revelation 13, 16, it says all, he calls it all both small and great. All right, it is what it is. All right, now let's go. Let's go get some Maccabees, and then uh, I'm gonna get, I'm, Lord, I'm gonna get the whole chapter. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get the whole chapter. Now, keep in mind, just like we did in the last lesson with the story of Eleazar being forced to eat pork. Right? Fast forward to today. This group of men and their mother are going to be forced. It's going to come a point where you're going to be forced to take the chip. Right? You may be by yourself like Eleazar. You may be with a group like this example right here. But Lord willing, this will be edifying and inspirational because these things were written aforetime for our learning that through the comfort of the scriptures that we might have hope, you know. So hopefully this will give everybody what they need because I know I'll go to it quite a bit, you know, to keep myself grounded, you know, because a lot of stuff is coming and people not ready for it, man, you know. And just because you think you're ready don't mean you are. Like I say all the time, man, you want to, you, you want the the zeal that you have in these videos that you do to be increased a hundredfold during times like this all right this is second maccabees chapter 7 verse 1 it says it came to pass that seven brethren and their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips you see see right now they're telling you it's going to be for your health it's going to be for your benefit you know, you're gonna be it's gonna be more convenient. You'll never lose your keys again. You don't gotta worry about losing your wallet. You know, if you're in a position to where you are incapacitated, they can just check the chip on your hand or check your chip and get your medical information. It can save lives, right? But it also says in the prophecy that the people that don't want to take it are gonna be killed. You see? It also says in the prophecy that John saw the souls of them that were beheaded. You know? For this testimony so it says that you're gonna be tormented with scourges and whips that's coming you know and the the believers on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai know this already it says but one of them that spake first said thus what wouldst thou ask or learn of us we are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers <laughs> then the king being enraged commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot which forthwith being heated he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now, when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in a pan. And as the vapor and the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, the Lord power, Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai looketh upon us, and in truth hath comfort in, uh, comfort in us. As Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second, and made him a mocking stock. And when they pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Wilt thou eat? They asked him, Are well, you going to take this chip now? Before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? But he answered in his own language, told him in the Hebrew, right? He said, La'ah. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order, as the former did. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his loss unto everlasting life. You see? And that's the state that we hope to be in, man. You see? Watching watching a brother be tortured or watching your a loved one get tortured or however it's going to go and still be able to understand that the Lord has made this as a part of your walk so that he can raise you up, man. You see? And everything that you lose, just like in the situation with Job. Job lost all those things, but he received them back a hundredfold because he kept his integrity. These men and, this, and, and, and their mother kept their integrity, man. You see? In the hour of temptation. See, the Lord said he was going to keep us in the hour of temptation because we kept his word. You see? So when the Lord promised that it's going to be some of us that don't taste death, this could apply to you. You know, being one of these men that in this very situation, in this chapter, that don't uh, 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 get murdered. You know? This would be a perfect time for spiritual power to be invoked. Fast forward into today. But these men did what they did so that we can have a written record. So we can know how to handle these situations when they come because they are coming. Verse 10, it says, After him was the third made a mocking stock, and when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, 
and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his laws I despised them. From, and from him I hope to receive them again. Talking about his hands, right? Having an understanding of reincarnation. Knowing that your work's going to follow you. You see? Knowing that they were going to be rewarded for standing up today. You know? And also acknowledging that it was their sins that got them there in the first place. So it's a lot of moving parts going on during the hour of temptation, man. You see? Your fear of death is going to be overcome by the fear of the Heavenly Father and being repentant and knowing that you put yourself in this position, but he can still deliver you, you know? That's a heavy thing to think about, man. And to, to not know this, to not know this going into Jacob's trouble, you're going to see how those people get dealt with, man. You see? Knowing this is coming versus not knowing this is coming is going to help. Verse 12, it says, In so much that the king... And they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage, for that he had nothing regarding the uh, for he for that he nothing regarded the pains. Now, when this man was dead, also they tormented the mangled, they tormented and mangled the fourth in the like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said, "Thus, it is good being put to death by men, to look for the hope of Yahweh to be raised up again by him. As for thee." Thou shalt have no resurrection of life. You see, having an understanding through the spirit that the very same devil that was putting him to death wasn't going to have no resurrection. He knew that at the, eventually Esau was going to be wiped out, man. You see, knowing that Esau was going to be paid back for what he was doing. Verse 15, it says, Afterward they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible, thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of the Most High. But abide a while, and behold his great power, how he will torment thee, thy seed, thee and thy seed. And after him they also, the sixth, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against Having, uh, having sinned against our power Therefore marvelous things are done unto us You see Now you notice It was seven brothers And each one of them Had something to say Before he was put to death man You see And when you think about Everything that they said Going in That's everything that we need to know When we in that situation man You see You tell Esau that he the devil You tell him he gonna get paid back You acknowledge your faults You know you repent to the Heavenly Father. You glorify the Heavenly Father. They did all those different things. Keep, I'm going to keep reading. Right? It says, After him, they also brought the six, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our Father. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against the Most High, that thou shalt escape unpunished. You see? So he acknowledged his fault. Told Esau that he gonna have to pay for his faults, so they still prophesying why they being put to death. So all in one whop, they acknowledging their faults, they uh, repent to the heavenly Father, they prophesying to this devil that he going down, they glorifying the heavenly Father. All these things are happening at the same time, man. You see, verse twenty it says, but the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory, for when she saw her seven sons slain. Within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord, right? She had that same understanding, right? They will all be together again. It says, yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, neither have I gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of uh, of every one of you? You see, she was even in uh, a humble spirit, understanding that the Lord was in total control, man. You see, a righteous woman. This woman was kind of righteous, and she understood that it wasn't all about her. You see, all you women out there talking about you give life, it's going to be a different spirit in that day. You're going to understand your role in that day. This woman understood her role and she played it to the fullest, man. The spirit of the Lord was on her, man. It says she, I'm going to read that again. 
Verse 21, it says, Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits, right? The spirit was on her. And stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, man. You see, those womanish thoughts, those womanish thoughts wouldn't have been able to watch all her babies be slaughtered. But it was that manly, it was that manly courage that had to kick in for her to be able to understand. You see, and she understood. And she told him, she said, I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was I, uh, neither were the I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things. You see, glorifying the Lord. You see, glorifying the Lord. But the uh, but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. They, they mom told them this, man. You see, our mothers don't speak like that today, man. You see, as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. You see, they mom told them that they was going to be rewarded, man. With breath and life again, man. You see, and that breath and life, that's what I'm saying. When you break it down, man, when you break it down, that breath and life goes more than into just flesh and bones and breathing. You see, it said the Lord was gonna give you breath and life again, man. Meaning that He was gonna He was gonna bring us back, and we and, and the fact that they were willing to stand up for the law, statutes, and commandments, then it's gonna be programmed in their inward parts, man, making them perfect coming back, man. You see, so dying for the Lord's law, well, so dying for the sake of the Lord's laws, you see, the reward is to have those laws programmed into you to where you'll never have to deal with that again, man. You see, and that's what the bigger picture is all about. Verse 24 says, Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him a, a, both a rich and a happy man if he would turn the laws, uh, turn from the laws of his father. That's what I'm saying. How are you going to make him a, a happy man and a rich man? Well, you can make him rich, but you can't make him happy. How are you going to make him happy if you just slaughtered his family out in front of him and told him to denounce the Heavenly Father? How is he going to be a happy man moving forward? That's a terrible deal, man. But you see, that's what happens today, man. They offer, they offer our people these deals, and they take them. You see? This still happens, man. This is an example. And what did this young man do? Right? It says, and that he also... Yeah, and that he also would take him for his friend and trust him with his affairs. You know, he was gonna he was gonna put some command on him. He was gonna give him some rank, give him some bread after you just slaughtered his family, right? In front of him. Verse 25, it says, But when the young man would in no wise hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. So he told him he they tried to get the youngest brother to sell out. He said no. So then they went to his mom and tried to get the mom to get him to sell out. You see, which also goes to show you that they'll, that's how far they'll go. They'll offer you money. They'll try to get your mom. They'll kill your family. They'll do all these things to get you to hearken. And this family wasn't having none of that. You see, verse 26, it says, And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this wise, uh, uh, on this manner, O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee upon, uh, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, and consider that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai made them of things that were not and so was mankind made likewise fear not this tormentor but being worthy of thy brethren take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren you see and this family is coming back and they're going to do the same thing when it comes to not taking their microchip man you see the spirit the spirit of saying no to this devil is heavy in the planet right now man you see and we're going to have to deal. We, we already read it in Revelations, man. That all the world, all, every human being on the 
whole inhabited earth is going to have to deal with this, man. Right? While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the, uh, of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see, prophesying. Same thing. Same thing we doing. Right? Let you know that prophesying is strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. You see, Lord willing, I'm going to end with that. If I can remember. It says, And thou that has been the author of all mischief Hold up, let me go back. I'll go ahead. Right? Verse 31 it says, And the author that has been the uh, uh and and thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction. Yet shall he be at one against his servant. Uh, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. You see, we prophesy in their downfall and our upbringing, man. You see, in the midst of repenting to the heavenly Father, acknowledging our faults, glorifying the heavenly Father, all in the hour of temptation, man. You see what what all is gonna be going on, you know, in the hour of temptation. It's gonna be different from each one of us, man. Verse 34, it says, But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty uh, of the Almighty Power, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, right, a short pain, this is described as a short pain. They were maiming those brothers chopping out their tongues scalping them burning them in oil all these different things it says for our brethren who have now suffered a short pain or dead under the most highest covenant of everlasting life but thou through the judgment of yahweh bashem yahweh shah shall receive just punishment for thy pride you see so the same god that's punishing us that loves us is the same god that's gonna punish you and he hates you you see, it says, but I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that he will speedily be merciful unto our nation, right? That he will speedily be merciful unto our nation, man. You see, the elect are doing it for everybody. It's not just about themselves, man. The elect have taken on the whole thought process of thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Whatever needs to be done for the Lord's will to play out, hey, sign us up, man. Sign us up. And we got this example from our forefathers, man. All right? It says, but as I, uh, it says, but I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, that he will speedily be merciful unto our nation. And that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is our power right it says and that in me and my brethren the wrath of the almighty which is justly brought upon our nation may cease right that's the same spirit Yahweh Shai took on you know what father gonna have mercy the father gonna have mercy on all of us if I take this you know what I'm saying for the elect's sake we come in that same stead man right it says, and that in me and my brethren, that the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon us, may cease. That's what I'm saying. We know that the Lord is Almighty. We know that it's our fault. We know that he's going to raise us up. You see? Then the king being in, then, uh, then the king being in rage handed him worse than all the rest and took it grievously that he was mocked. You see? So the youngest, the youngest out of all the sons got it the worst. You see? But he wasn't worried about that because he, he knew about the bigger picture. He understands the bigger picture, right? It says, so this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. That's heavy, man. The youngest, 
the youngest out of all them. It says, so this man died undefiled. Right? That's huge, man. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons of the mother died, let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feast and extreme tortures, man. You see, how much more today? How much more today? Right? Now, let's get a uh, Sirach 4 and 28. And then we go ahead and end it. Right? It says, Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack. Uh, be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack and remiss. Right? Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic. Okay, that's going to something else. But yeah, man. Yeah, man. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. Uh, matter of fact, let me get one more. Sirach 2. Right. Uh, I'm going to start at 7 Yeah, This is uh, Sirach 2 and 7 It says Ye that fear the Lord Wait for his mercy And go not aside Lest ye fall Ye that fear the Lord Believe him And your reward Shall not fail They knew that Those Maccabees brothers And their mom They knew that Fast forward to today, we know this. Okay? It says, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth of sins and saveth in time of affliction. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways, right? Did they display the fear of man, or did they display the fear of the Lord in the chapter that we just read in 2 Maccabees? The fear of the Lord was on display, right? It says, Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways we started the chapter we started the lesson with revelation 3 and 10 it says i will keep you uh, i will keep you in the day of uh, in the day of temptation because you kept my word right they that fear the lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways they that fear the lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him and they that will love uh, and they that love him shall be filled with the law they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, right? So that we can be taken care of when it matters the most, man, right? Saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men, for his majesty is, for as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Hey, man. Hey, if that don't do nothing for you, you can talk about the Bible, the Apocrypha is non-canonical law you want, man. These words are very important, you see, and that's why it's only for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekah HaKwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the Akim teaching by the Mayan Wa'amah. That's his sincerity and truth. Shalom, man. Hey, Akim. Rekah Ra, Bashar Ma'ait. More spirit, less flesh. Moving forward, man. We gonna need it. Shalom.